Hi viewers, welcome to the second lecture of CEC 309 Construction Technology. Today we're going to look at relationship in civil engineering contracts. So if you are here to subscribe, please click the subscribe button and if you want to receive updates on our new videos click the bell icon or notification icon and if you like this video please like us on youtube if you have questions if you have suggestions if you have comments you can drop them below the comments section or at the comment section below this video so today we are going to look at basics of client engineer contract relationship a successful completed project require a blend of expertise and skills combined with effective communication among professionals and the clients representatives this lesson discusses this issue in detail by explaining the typical rules and responsibilities of the engineer, contractor, association manager, project manager, and project team. To start with, let us look at the engineer. Typically, the engineer is hired to prepare a plan and specification for the work to be completed. During this project phase, the engineer's role is to design a plan and specification tailored to the client's needs with respect to function, economies, and long-term durability. So what we are trying to say here is that the work of the engineer or his responsibility is to plan or prepare the plan and the specification for the work to be completed. So the specification contains instructions on how to be able to implement what is contained in the plan or in the design. We said during this project phase, the engineer's role is to plan and design the specification. And while doing this, he is expected to suit the, the client's need with respect to, he must have in mind, meeting up with the function the intended purpose of that project considering economic factors he is also going to consider durability of that project next we look at why the engineer is hired the engineer is hired because one the municipality or another government entity country state etc the insurer lender sets this as a project requirement. Secondly, it is hired because the association or the client wants to ensure that prospective contractors will be bidding on a consistent scope of work. So this is part of why the engineer is hired. It may be as, a, as part of the project requirement or because of um, rules or, or the what is expected or what is on the law under the law the provision of the law that's why we said the municipality it can be any government entity at the federal state or local level insisting that every project must involve the almost future an engineer then also another reason why he may be hired is because maybe the insurer the insurance company or the lender or the banks financial institutions might set this as a project requirement then the client also wants to ensure that every contractor or any contractor bidding for the job will be doing that based on a consistent scope so they will be having similar templates for bidding so the next one we need to look at we want to look at more reasons why the engineer is also engaged they include 
uncertainty regarding the extent of the work required, the desire to obtain an unbiased third party professional opinion, prudence in obtaining professional services to advocate for the association in the case of a construction defect, design deficiency, or other issue that may arise from the project. So these are other reasons why the engineer is engaged or the client may employ an engineer. So the plans and the specifications prepared by the engineer are based on a combination of factors. They include his field of experience, published industrial or industry standards, code requirements, and the fourth one is pro project specific design requirements. So these are factors which govern the nature of the plans and specification designed by the engineer. After the engineer has submitted the plans and the specification to the client for review, along with a cost estimate for the proposed work, the plans approved by the client are then typically sent to contractors for bidding. Upon reviewing the bids, the engineer will provide a comparison of the bids to the client for selection of a contractor. So here we are saying that the engineer makes the plan and the specification. He then sends it to the, the client for a review and approval. Upon approval, it is being forwarded to contractors for bidding. So after bidding, the engineer reviews the bids and then provides a comparison for the bids for the client, comparison of the bids to the client and recommend who is best to deliver the job or to carry out the job. So the engineer makes a comparison of the bid for the client to select a suitable contractor. Next, we look at that of a contractor. So the contractor is obviously hired to implement the specified scope of work and is responsible for completing the work within the terms of the contract, including coordinating the delivery and installation of materials, disposal of debris, and all ancillary work. The contractor is also responsible for obtaining permits and coordinating approval from the local and state authorities. So the function of the contractor is to implement the, speci the specified scope of work and he is also, also supposed to do this or completing the work within the terms and agreement of the contract and including he is also expected to coordinate delivery of materials and installation of materials on site. Uh, disposal of debris is also his responsibility and any other ancillary work. Then he is also expected to get permits from the local and state authorities. On every successful project, the contractor, the engineer and property manager are a team and individually and collectively work for the same client with a singular goal completing the specified work on time. If the team fails to collaborate effectively, the project will be subject to delays and conflicts, inevitably resulting in an unhappy and dissatisfied client. This set of circumstances has economic consequences Poor project results can provide the basis for delayed payments to contractors or professionals. And in the most severe circumstances, serve as a catalyst for litigation. So these are the parties to the civil engineering contracts. The contractor, the engineer, and the property manager are supposed to work as a team. So they need to work together to ensure that the project is 
delivered on time next we look at a resident engineer his job description and responsibility there are many brains behind construction projects the people who actually handle the planning aspect of every project one such position is that of a resident engineer who supervises and instructs construction staff in projects such as building roads structures and bridges resident engineers are qualified individuals who are required to have a degree in engineering before they can apply for a job they need to possess ability to manage time efficiently and resolve complex problems since they work with construction teams extensively they also need to be able to provide technical advice akin to construction methodologies and of course be able to handle cost estimates apart from overseeing and monitoring construction staff resident engineers also handle da daily log logs project documents and material calculation which are essential to the success of every construction project ensuring that the right materials are purchased and used in every construction project and ensuring compliance to safety regulations in a given in the given job to understand what a resident engineer does on a broader level we will look at the following list of responsibilities for this position one of his duty or one of the duty his duties is to create and hand out schedules for construction staff working in the field so the schedules are prepared by the resident engineer and also perform field quality control observations and assessments inspect and assess the quality of materials being used for construction projects calculate the quantity of material supplies and equipment needed for each individual project verify and approve invoices of purchases oversee the work of field staff to ensure efficacy of work procedures ensure compliance to project specifications make sure that all construction activities are being carried out in accordance to preset safety rules ensure availability of resources and materials at all times provide recommendations for repair work and make sure that deadlines are complied to perform continuous evaluation on trends and ensure that preventive maintenance is managed at each stage of the project survey maps and blueprints prior to creating construction plans Determine project feasibility and direct all resources to the site in a time-efficient manner. Provide technical advice to field staff in order to ensure that construction procedures are being carried out properly. Identify construction constraints and plan and carry out measures to counter them. Prepare public reports such as bid proposals and environmental impact statements. Test sites to ensure appropriateness for construction projects. Prepare period reports and assessments for each project phase. So, viewers, this is where we'll come to the end of the second lecture on the course CEC 309.